Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming are now closed to the public as a dangerous fissure has opened. In just 24 hours, a 100-foot-wide crack has opened up in the ground in Yellowstone, releasing steam and other signs of volcanic activity. With millions living within range of the volcano's destructive power, the news has sent shockwaves worldwide. Is this the start of something catastrophic? What does it mean for the future of Yellowstone and the people who live nearby? Stay with us to find out. Yellowstone National Park is a true American treasure, home to breathtaking landscapes and fascinating wildlife. Established in 1872 by President Ulysses S. Grant, Yellowstone was the first national park in the United States and remains one of the most visited parks in the country today, covering an incredible 2.2 million acres across three states – Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. Yellowstone National Park is much larger than most people realize. In fact, it's bigger than the states of Rhode Island and Delaware combined. The park is a designated UNESCO World Heritage Site and forms part of the Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem, which includes Grand Teton National Park and the surrounding national forests. Tourism has been an integral part of Yellowstone since its inception. Visitors have visited the park for over a century to hunt, fish, and appreciate the natural world. In recent years, the park has seen a surge in visitors, with a record high of 4,860,538 visitors in 2021. Due to the high demand for park access, a reservation system has been implemented to manage crowds and ensure visitors can enjoy the park safely. The Upper Geyser Basin is the most famous attraction in Yellowstone, home to the world's largest hot springs and the park's most famous geyser, Old Faithful. With over 150 geysers, hot springs, and fumaroles, the park has created a lovely path through the Upper Geyser Basin, making it easy to view the fascinating geothermal features in the area. You'll be amazed by the natural beauty of this unique landscape. The Grand Canyon of Yellowstone is another must-see attraction, with its rugged, colorful canyon and two stunning waterfalls. The lower falls are twice as tall as Niagara Falls, while the upper falls tumble 109 feet. Visitors can stay in the Canyon Village with available hotel rooms. Midway Geyser Basin is a small basin in Yellowstone, but it contains the most photographed geothermal feature in the park, the Grand Prismatic Hot Spring. This vast, 120-foot deep hot spring is famous for its surreal, vivid coloring. Its center is a gorgeous cerulean hue, surrounded by fiery reds, yellows, and oranges. Excelsior, once the largest geyser in the world, is also located here. One of the park's most prominent features is its geothermal activity, resulting from the Yellowstone Caldera, an active supervolcano that sits beneath the park's surface. However, something frightening is happening. In only 24 hours, the park grew a gigantic 100-foot-wide crack, forcing park officials to block off a significant part while they conducted urgent studies to discover what was going on and what it meant for the area's topography. Before discussing the crack, let's take a moment to learn more about the supervolcano. Yellowstone National Park is home to a beautiful and deadly secret, a supervolcano lurking beneath the surface. This colossus is located in northwestern Wyoming, spanning Idaho and Montana, and is one of Earth's largest active volcanic systems. The ground above Yellowstone's supervolcano sits on a hot molten semi-molten rock known as magma. Volcanologists have studied this activity since 1923, estimating that the ground rose roughly 25 centimeters between 2004 and 2009. Although Yellowstone is a dormant volcano with minimal instability, the recent subsurface activity has stimulated some concern. Scientists estimate that the most recent Yellowstone explosion was 1,000 times more potent than the infamous 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption, which killed 56 people and many animals and destroyed hundreds of square kilometers of land in Washington and Oregon. Yellowstone's history of producing some of the most significant known eruptions has sparked great interest in keeping track of its activities. However, is it possible to foretell the exact moment the volcano will erupt again? While we can't predict with certainty what's going on, the next eruption may be inevitable. So if you're planning a trip to Yellowstone, enjoy the beautiful scenery in hot springs, but keep an eye on the ground beneath your feet. Although Yellowstone has not erupted for over 600,000 years, scientists are working to better understand the volcano, hoping to predict the next eruption. The Hidden Falls and Inspiration Point areas are closed due to the elevated potential for rockfall. 
Yellowstone is currently recharging, with its magma chambers being filled with molten rock from the Earth's mantle. This allows experts to estimate the amount of magma entering the supervolcano accurately. Although this technique does not enable scientists to predict when Yellowstone will erupt, it helps to better understand how the volcano replenishes its deadly magma stores. Researchers at Washington State University believe these pools of molten volcanic rock build in subsurface magma chambers and are critical to the eruption process. Once the chambers are filled, the landform could explode at any time, potentially erupting within months or several millennia after a magma recharge. The eruption occurs when the magma chambers burst, throwing as much as 240 cubic miles 1,000 cubic kilometers of magma into the air. So what do we know about the 100-foot-wide crack? NASA's satellite imagery detected the fissure crack close to the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome, one of two uplifted areas in the caldera's center that indicate magma movement and pressure changes. This 24-mile-long fissure runs from the northeast to the southwest of the dome. Geologists closely monitor the rock buttress as they have detected expanding cracks, and it is unclear how the fissure opened. Due to the elevated potential for rockfall, the area has been shut down as it sits over the Yellowstone supervolcano. The fissure was found in the Teton area, which is located in the Wyoming section of Yellowstone Park. Interestingly, Teton is no stranger to volcanoes, as the rugged beauty of the Tetons is the result of four geological factors – tough rocks in the core, vertical uplift, recent mountain formation, and dynamic forces of erosion. While other mountains in Wyoming share these features, the Tetons are the youngest range in the state, less than 10 million years old, and have yet to be eroded to the same extent. Despite the hardness of their rocks, efficient transporting agencies move rock debris away from the mountains, preventing lower slopes from being buried. Although the steep walls and pinnacles of the Tetons are preserved by the absence of weak layers, they are still subject to erosion. Is Yellowstone's supervolcano the ultimate tourist attraction or a catastrophic time bomb waiting to explode? Let's face it, there's nothing more terrifying than the idea of the Yellowstone supervolcano erupting. The thought of ash clouds spreading over the entire United States makes even the bravest of us tremble. But fear not, NASA has a plan to prevent this disaster from happening. According to experts, the most likely scenario for a Yellowstone eruption is a smaller event with lava flows, similar to what is currently happening at Iceland's Bardarbunga. However, the damage could be catastrophic in the unlikely event of a considerably larger super-eruption. A super-eruption would be 1,000 times more powerful than an ordinary volcanic eruption, spewing at least 240 cubic miles of material and lasting for weeks or months. The good news is that NASA believes drilling up to 6 miles 10 kilometers, down into the supervolcano beneath Yellowstone National Park to pump in water at high pressure could cool it. This would prevent a super eruption and save the United States from a potential disaster. Of course, this solution comes with risks. The mission would cost a staggering $3.46 billion, making it an expensive endeavor. Additionally, drilling into the top of the magma chamber would be very risky. However, carefully drilling from the lower sides could work. A chance to finance the plan exists by using heat as a resource. It might be utilized to build a geothermal power plant which produces electricity at incredibly low costs of about 10 cents per kilowatt hour. But the process of subduing a supervolcano is complex. It would be an excruciatingly slow process that would only happen at the rate of one meter a year, meaning it would take tens of thousands of years to cool it completely. And even then, there wouldn't be a guarantee that it would be successful for at least hundreds or thousands of years. If you liked this video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button right now and check out the next video on your screen we've already prepared for you.